Hey there CTM students, welcome to the chapter 12 review and practice test. We're going to do mostly problems from the chapter 12 review starting on page 746 along with a smattering, just a sample of some problems from the practice test as well. So let's get right into it and see what we got here. So we're starting at 29 on the chapter review on page 746. I've already taken snapshots of each of the problems that we're going to be working on here. So let's see what we got. In exercises 29 to 32, assume that the Pollingers are going to purchase three bags of candy. The store has only 12 different bags of candy, including five different varieties made by Hershey. So five made by Hershey, that sounds pretty important. I'll underline that. Four different varieties made by Nestle, and three made by HB Reese Candy Company, Reese's right there. So if Mrs. Pollinger selects three of the 12 varieties at random, so 12 total, Selecting three, find the probability that she selects. All right, 29, starting off with three varieties of Hershey candy. So what we want over the total, that's always probability. We can use that idea here. This is actually a combination problem. This is not tw from 12.6. Uh, we're kind of going out of order. We're, we're doing for, at least if you're in my class, part two we're saying is 12.6 to 12.11, uh, but we're gonna be starting with a combination problem which comes later in the, the chapter towards the end of the chapter so what we want is going to be well how many things do we have that are Hershey's we've got five bags that are Hershey's and of those we're saying we want to choose three from those five so there are five choose three ways to pick a bag of Hershey's or pick three bags of Hershey's candy and then how many total ways are there to pick three bags of candy there's twelve total to choose from and we have to pick three. So five, choose three. Let's see, I have a calculator here, scientific calculator that I'm working this out on off to the side. You do need to know how to do this the long way for the test if you're in my class. You'll have some that require a calculator, others where you can't use a calculator on the test. So this is one right now I'm saying you can use a calculator, but we need to know how to do these without a calculator as well. And so 12, choose, three. That ends up being, just a minute, having some trouble with my calculator here. 12 choose three, 220. And so this becomes, you can reduce this by getting rid of the single zero. It's like dividing by 10. You have your answer of one over 22. So let's check out number 30. No varieties of Nestle candies. No varieties of Nestle candy. candies would be saying you're going to pick from the eight that aren't Hershey's, we've got, or from the seven, sorry, that aren't Hershey's. There's seven that are not Hershey's. That will help us here. From those seven, you're gonna pick three. So that's becoming what we want. From the seven that we have that aren't Hershey's, seven choosing three from those. So we've got four Nestle and three Reese. And then over the total, still 12 choose three. So you have seven, choose three, which is 35, and 12 choose three is still 220. Now I was getting confused there for a moment. I see why now. I had thought of this right before, but say it's no varieties of Nestle. Ooh. So let's change that. That changes this right here. I'm sorry about that. So Nestle there's five that are Hershey, four that are Nestle, and three that are Reese. So there's four that are, that are Nestle. That means there's eight that are not Nestle. Put the little accent there because it's there. And so we have eight choose three. That sounds better. Okay, so eight choose three, which is 56. And 12 choose three is still 220. And you can reduce this, 56 divided by... 220, if you reduce it, oh, what goes into both of those? Four goes into both of those. This would be 16, and this would be 55. You could divide by two and then divide by two again, and you would get 16. 14, man, 14 over 65. Not 16, 14. And that jives with what's in the back. All right, 31. We won't mess this one up so much at least one variety of Nestle candy that would be so the probability of at least one Nestle 
Whenever we have those at least questions, it's a lot easier to think about it as one minus the probability of having no Nestle or no of whatever you're talking about, none of those things. So this is going to become one minus the probability of, well, we just figured out no Nestle right here was 14 over 55. So one minus 14 over 55, you can make these with a common denominator, or make them have a common denominator. You can say that's 55 over 55 is the same as one. So you have that minus 14 over 55, and that becomes 41 over 55. Final answer for number 31. And then number 32, varieties of Hershey, Hershey, Reese, in this order. And so I would say, let's fill in or put in three blanks for this one. Uh, I really feel like they should say that this is without replacement, because uh, I was thinking about the answer and how to arrive at that for a moment there. And if you think of with or without replacement, it's going to make a difference. So we're saying without replacement here. Okay, so varieties of Hershey, Hershey and Reese. So the variety of Hershey is for this first pick. This we want to have an H. So you would have five that are Hershey's. So is that right here? Five out of Hershey's, or out of there that are Hershey's, out of 12. So there's a five out of 12 chance of getting that first one as a Hershey. Now you've picked that bag of candy. There's 12 different bags of candy. So you're not going to put it back. Uh, you've selected that as one of your bags of candy. And so now you have four Hershey's left. Hershey's left out of 11 bags of candy still remaining. So a Hershey's, then a Hershey's, and then a Reese in that order. This would become, for the Reese, you have three out of, now there's not 12 bags left, there's 10 bags left. So this would be three out of 10. And let's see if we can do some cross canceling here. I can cross cancel the five and the 10. I could make that a one and a two. And it looks like I could also cross cancel this Right here, I could make this a 1, and I could make this a 4. Gosh. All right, 3, not 4, sorry. Make this a 3, and then I see a 3 and a 3 here, so I could cross it out and make that a 1. Make that a 1, and it looks like that'll do it for me. So let's make sense of what's left. I've got 1 on the top, 1 times 1 times 1, over 1 times 11 times 2, 1 over 22. And so that's what we got there in the back of the book. Let's move on to the next set, the next batch of problems here. Automobile quality control and exercises 41 through 44. So yes, we are skipping ahead to 41 through 44. A sample of 180 new cars was checked for defects. The following table shows the results of the survey. So American built, foreign built, we've got these amounts, total amounts here and here. Find the probability but if one car is selected from this sample, the car has fewer. So these are these given problems, given that something is the case. So 41, fewer than six defects, given that it is American built. So with these kinds of questions, it's still what you want over the total, but I want you to think of it as what you want over the given total. So if you have these given that questions or What's the probability of this happening if this is to be true? That sort of thing. Want over the total becomes want over the given total. And so let's see. Fewer than six defects. Given that is an American built car. So how many total American built cars do we have? We've got a total of 106 American built cars. So that's my given total. That's my total. What I want to happen, fewer than six defects, that's right here. It's not both of these because we're saying it has to be American built. So given that it's American built, there's 106 of those total. How many of those have fewer than six defects? You have 89. Is this reducible? Can we reduce that? It looks like it should be. And so let's see what goes into both of those. Just kidding. No, 89 is a prime number. Uh, so that's it. That is not reducible. And we'll move on. Number 42. Fewer than six defects, given that it is foreign built. So fewer than six defects. Now it's still this total part is going to be over here, but now we're saying it's foreign built. So we have 74 that are foreign built. That's now my total. 74 goes on the bottom. So still this idea. What goes on the top, though? So fewer than six defects, given that it's foreign built. Here's fewer than six defects, 
given for and built. So we have 55 over 74. 55 is divisible by 5 and 11, but neither one of those numbers goes into there. So we have our answer right there, 55 over 74. For 43, let's see what we got for this one. Six or more defects, so that's going to be this column, given that it is foreign built. So six or more defects, given foreign built. So here's the given total, six or more defects. This should be 19 over 74. 19 is prime, so we can't reduce that at all unless 19 goes into 74, and it does not, and so that is the final reduced answer for that one. 44 then, final one in this batch. Six or more defects, given that it is American built. So given American built, there it is. Six or more defects, there's that. And so our answer is 17 over 106 is the given total. 17 over 106, 17 is prime. 17 does not go into 106, therefore it is not reducible. Let's move on to the next problem here. 50 is a standalone problem. Spelling bee, five finalists remain in a high school spelling bee. Two will receive $50 each, two will receive $100 each, and one will receive $500. How many different arrangements of prizes are possible? So with number 50 here, we've basically got five things to fill in, but there's a twist to this one too. So it's not quite as simple as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that is what you need to start at least. You need to, to think of this to start. But there is duplications here. There's two that will receive $50 and there's also two that will receive $100. So we need to think of this. I'll write that in here. Think of this to start, so it is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, but you also have duplication. So permutations of duplicate objects, objects, excuse me, we're saying that we have n factorial over, if there's duplications, we have to divide by those duplications, and 2 factorial, this formula can be found on page 721, 721, so this gets all multiplied and then n to however many you have duplicated. So in this case, it's going to become 5 factorial over you have 2 of $50 and 2 of $100. So that gets duplicated. You've got a 2 factorial because of that, and you've got another 2 factorial because of that. So this would be 5 factorial, ends up being 120. 2 factorial is just 2. Another 2 factorial is just 2 again. So you have 2 times 2, which is 120 over 4 which ends up being 30. So how many different arrangements? Let's say 30 arrangements here. So let's move on to number 51. That one, good to go. 51 says Mrs. Williams takes, Williams takes her children shopping. Each of her children gets to select a different type of candy and only that child will eat at the store. There are only 10 boxes of candy left, and each is a different type. In how many ways can the children select the candy? So here's how I would think of this one. You've got three children. They're going to make selections in a row. So the first child has 10 boxes of candy to choose from. So we can fill in that first one with a 10. The second child then has nine boxes of candy to choose from. The other child's not going to put their box of candy back, so this is a without replacement problem. So 10 times 9, and then the third child, likewise, will have 8 to choose from. If you multiply that all together, you have 720 ways. Another way you could think about this problem is to use permutations. You could say it's 10, sorry, 10, P3, 10 are selecting 3 were the order does make a difference uh, because a child selecting the first type of candy here would be different than the child, a different child selecting that type of candy later. So this is a permutation type problem. This would be 10 over, and then this would be 10 minus 3 on the bottom factorial, which is the same thing as if you did this the long way, just showing you how that works in case you need a refresher on that. That would be that, which would be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial over 7 factorial. Very well, 7 factorials, you have 10 times 9 times 8 left, which is the same thing right there as that. 
53 of them. Skipping 52 or doing 53? Medicine. Dr. Goldberg has three doses of serum for influenza type A. Six patients in the office require the serum. In how many different ways could Dr. Goldberg dispense the serum? So this problem is, you got to decide, is it a combination or permutation type problem? We've got six patients, and only three of them are going to get the, uh, the shot or the dosage. But does it matter what order you give the shots in? I would say no on this one. So if patient one gets a shot first or patient three gets a shot first, it doesn't make a difference. They're still getting the shot. Uh, the order does not make a difference. Uh, so this is a combination type problem. We're saying it is six. Choose three here. Six, choose three. And you could put, type this into a calculator. Let's just get the practice here is how that works out again. So remember combinations, you've got your n factorial on the top. This first number goes on the top. And then on the bottom, you've got, you can do 6 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. The order of the way you write that doesn't technically make a difference, but I want to make sure I just follow what the book has just a second. And so just as a reminder there, if you have n cr factorial, or not cr, sorry, in general it's n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. Now the r factorial part gets rid of those duplications, so this could be written as 6 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial. And So if we think about this the long way, I'll do this one the long way so we get a little extra practice with that. Depends whether or not I say you can use a calculator for something like this. So this would be 3 factorial this would also be 3 factorial. You could write this as 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 factorial. And one of the 3 factorials will then cancel out. So I would say cross off something like that. You've got 6 times 5 times 4 over 3 times 2 times 1. Let's see what we can reduce here. This could be reduced. We could have a 2 and a 1. And the 2 and the 4 could be reduced. That could be a 1 and a 2. And so this would become 10, that would become 20, you'd have 20 over 1, which is the same thing as 20. Let's move on to number 54 now, 54. Part A, part B, we got two parts to this one. Got some dog sleds. I'd love to, to ride a dog sled. I've never ridden one before. But 10 of 15 huskies are to be selected to pull a dog sled. How many ways can this selection be made? So here... It seems like, it sounds like that the order wouldn't make a difference because the 10 huskies you pick, doesn't matter if you pick husky, oh, what do you want to call the huskies? I don't know. We could call one Charlie. We could call one Billy, the dog. <laughs> you could pick Billy and then Charlie. You could pick Charlie and Billy. They're still going to be on the team. So a combination is what seems like it's going to work for this one. So this one, we would have 15 huskies to choose from choosing 10 from those using C instead of P because the order doesn't make a difference and if you type that, well this one we'll just say we'll type it into a calculator you end up getting 3003 so there's that many different ways that that can happen and then that's part A, part B how many different arrangements of the 10 huskies now are possible so to arrange them think of it like this you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 You've got 10 for that first one. Maybe this is the front, and you could say this is your your sled, and they're all attached like this. Oh, let's see what this guy's sled looks like. So there he is. He's riding the sled. She, I don't know who it could be. So there's 10 choices for that front husky, but then there's only 9, and then 8, and then 7, and 6, and so on, all the way down to 1. Same thing as saying 10 factorial and 10 factorial. Bust out your calculator for that. Unless you want to do 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You're welcome to do that if you want. But I got in a calculator 10 factorial. 3,628,800 arrangements. So there's that many possible arrangements. That's a lot of arrangements. It's a lot of different ways you can order your huskies. Uh, so you decide what's best for you. Let's keep
keep moving along here 56 now we're skipping some I've selected particular problems for this review here a parent teacher committee a committee of six is to be formed from eight parents and ten teachers if the committee is to consist of two parents and four teachers how many different combinations are possible so we have eight parents ten teachers to choose from from them we're going to pick four we're going to pick two parents and four teachers so this committee of six how many different ways can we do this it's not saying what's the probability of a certain way happening but it's saying how many different ways can we com pick this committee of six so from the eight parents we are choosing we're selecting two of them and from the ten teachers we are selecting or choosing four of them so the number of ways parents can be selected is represented by this teachers represented by this to get all of them we're going to multiply that together for each way you have a parent you could branch off and do a different way for a teacher so that's why we're multiplying them together now 8 choose 2 let's see what that is I'll put that into the calculator 8 choose 2 that's 28 and 10 choose 4 that is 210 and those multiplied together ends up being 5,000 880 so there's that many combinations and I've checked the book there looks like we're good to go with that so now 58 choosing two aces two cards are selected at random without replacement sounds pretty important to me without replacement so we're not going to put them back from a standard deck or from a deck of 52 cards find the probability that two aces are selected. Now, they even gave us a hint here. Use combinations, it says. So how many aces are there to select from? There's four aces in the deck. That's why I'm going to use four. Choose two. There's two aces that you want to select. Four aces to choose from. So we have four choose two on the top. This is my aces. What I want to happen over the total. So what I want is aces over the total number of ways this can happen so that's going to equal right here this we've got 52 to pick from choosing any two this is the total number of ways I could pick two cards from the deck and so we've got four choose two that ends up being six and 52 choose two that ends up being 1326 you can reduce this you can divide both parts by six and you're going to get one over 221 Final answer for number 58. Next up, numbers 59 through 62. So these ones all use the same directions here. Color chips in exercises 59 through 62. A bag contains five red chips, three white chips. So five red, three white, and two blue. Three chips are to be selected at random without replacement. So three chips selected. And I would say based on what we have here, you have the total chips is going to be sounds like it might be important so we've got five red three white two blue that would be ten totals so five plus three plus two so three chips selected at random without replacement find the probability that for number 59 all of them are red so 59 all are red how many red do you have to choose from that's going to be what you want the number of ways that that can happen over the total is the number of total possible ways that any three could be picked and so this is going to become not five first, sorry. It should be yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the next part already. Five, choose three. You have five red ones to pick from, and from those you want to pick three. So that's the number of ways you could pick three red ones. How many ways could you pick three from the whole batch? You have ten, choose three on the bottom. Ten total ways. This becomes five choose three is ten, and ten choose three, one twenty. You can reduce the 10 and the 120. Divide by 10, you have an answer of 1 over 12. For number 60, now the first two are red and the third is blue. And while I use combinations on this one, I could have thought of this as 5 over 10 for the first chip times, uh, times 4 over 9 times 3 over 8. I could have done it that way and reduced this way 
For 60, I think that's going to be the easier way to think about it, that sort of style, that sort of method, because we've got this and problem. Well, what's the chance of the first one being read? Then what's the chance of the second one being read, given that this is without replacement? So it says that, without replacement. And then what's the chance of the third one then being blue? So my total for the first pick is 10. My total without replacement, since I'm picking one out, total for the second pick is 9. Total for the third pick would be 8. Of those that are in the, the bag, 5 are red to start. So 5. And then you picked a red one. So that means you would be only left with 4. 4 out of 9 for the second one. And then the third is blue. There's two blue chips. You didn't pick any blue chips here or here yet. So we're saying this times 2 over 8. You can reduce this. This I could say is 1 over 2. I could reduce that first. I could say this is 1 over 4. It's the same thing there. And then the 4 and the 4 here could cancel. To make that easier, I've got 1 over 2 times 9 times 1. 1 over 18 for number 60. That is final answer. Now 61, we could do in that same sort of way. This is another and problem easier to use this idea thinking of it like this again we could have done this idea with number 59 but I thought it was just quicker to use the combination idea for that one so the first is red second is white and the third is blue now so you have five to choose from that are red to start if you pick a red one you still have the same number of white ones for the second pick so that's three out of nine and then if you pick a red and a white to start, you still have two blue chips to choose from. You can reduce this. You can make that 1 over 4. You can make this 1 half. And you can make this 1 third. If you multiply it all together, you have 1 over 24, it looks like. So 1 over 24, that's good to go for that one. And then 62, at least one is red. So the probably at least if one is red, that's the same thing. And it's easier to think of this way. At least one red. It's the same thing as 1 minus the probability that none are red. And so the probability that none are red, you could use the combination idea or you could use this way again. So you'd have 5 over 10 that are red. That means 5 over 10 are not red as well. So you have 5 out of 10, 3 white, 2 blue that are not red. So you could use that idea or you could just use Five, choose three over. Write five again. Sorry, over ten, choosing three. So this again, right here, this could be replaced with you could write five over ten times four over nine. That would still not be red. Times three over eight. That would still not be red. So if you wrote that here instead of this, both of those are saying the same thing. This would be one half. Uh, let's see, I could reduce that. So a couple different ways to do this one. That would be one half, this would be one third, and so we'd have one twelfth here. This is exactly what was up here too, so I'm kind of showing you the other way to do this one. So this would be one twelfth. If you plug it into calculator, we already did that. That's one twelfth, so you have one minus one over twelve which is the same thing as saying 12 over 12 minus 1 over 12, which is the same thing as 11 over 12. Moving on then to number, what comes next? 63. So we're going in order here. 63 magazines in exercises 63 through 66 on a table. In a doctor's office are six Newsweek magazines, five U.S. News, and World Reports. That's the whole name of the magazine. World Report Magazine and three Time Magazines. If Ramona Cleary randomly selects three magazines, so she's picking three, uh, find the probability of that. So here, based on what's here, looks like six plus five plus three. The total number of magazines she has to select from, that's going to be 14 total. So that sounds rather important to me. Uh, let's figure that out from here, then the rest of these problems. So 63, three U.S news and world report magazines were selected so probability this is again a probability problem so want over the total we're still going to think of it like that so what do we want to happen we want to get this u.s news and world report magazine uh, and so from 
selecting three rank magazines in a row. So from the the five that we have to pick from, we're going to choose three of those: the five U.S. News and World Report magazines. And there's 14 total to choose from. So 14 choose three should be what goes on the bottom. And if you type this stuff into a calculator, you're going to get 10 over 364. Now 10 doesn't go into here. That's not ending with a zero, but two goes into both of these. It ends up being five over 162, not 162. My fault there. That should be 182, not 162. There we go, 182. And can you reduce this anymore? No, you'd have to divide by five, and five does not go into there. So this would be it for number 63, number 64. Now you're saying two Newsweek magazines and one Time magazine were selected. So this, the order isn't making a difference here. Back here, the order, it, it, kinda, it was making a difference here. We're saying do this first, and then this, and then this. But here the order could be different. Uh, you're just selecting two Newsweeks and one Time magazine. So the way we can do this, the number of ways this can happen, you have for two Newsweeks, you've got five, no, six Newsweeks to choose from. So six, choose two, and you're going to have one Time magazine to have, so from three to choose from. So three, choose one. That goes on the top. That's what you want to happen. This is the number of ways the Newsweek thing can happen, the two Newsweeks out of six, and this is the number of ways the Time magazines can happen, the one out of three, multiply them together, and put that over the total number of ways that three can be picked. This becomes, this is 15, this is three, and this is 364. This you can write as 45 over 364. That's not reducible, and so that is your final answer. Three doesn't go into to here, you sum up the, sum up the digits. 3 doesn't go into the sum of the digits, which is 13. Therefore, 3 does not go into there. And the only factors up here that would go into any of these are, would be 3 and 5. And so, not reducible. That's your final answer there. No Newsweek magazines were selected. So, no Newsweek would be, well, how many are not Newsweek here? We've got 6 that are Newsweek. That means we would have the 6 goes away. You'd have 5 plus 3 that aren't Newsweek. You add up eight to choose from. You would have eight to choose from. From those eight, you want to pick three again. So these are the number that aren't Newsweek. Eight choose three over 14. Choose three still on the bottom. Eight choose three. Let's see what I got for that. Eight choose three is 56. This will be over 364. And so this one, maybe I can reduce by more. Let me just divide it by two and see what happens. They're both even. So I'll get 28 over 182. Looks like I can divide by 2 again. I'd get 14 over 91. And I know 7 goes into both of those numbers. It goes into there twice. And it goes into here 13 times. So 2 over 13, that's not reducible anymore. So you could have actually, since I divided by 2, divided by 2 and divided by 7, 2 times 2 times 7, I could have divided by 28 right away. 28 is the largest number that goes into all of those, to both of those. And then 66, probably that at least one Newsweek now. So at least one, uh -huh, that's one of those problems again. So probably at least one Newsweek. And I can't spell Newsweek. That equals one minus the probability of no Newsweeks. We just figured out what the probability of no Newsweeks was. That's 2 over 13, so this is 1 minus 2 over 13. That's 13 over 13 minus 2 over 13. That's 11 over 13. That's it. Final answer right there. At 67, in the community of Spring Hill, 60% of the homes purchased cost more than $125,000. So here it looks like a binomial probability problem. Write the binomial probability formula to determine the probability that exactly X of the next N homes purchased in Spring Hill will cost more than $125,000. So 67 part A. Remember the general formula for this, P of X equals N choose X times P of X, P to the X power, sorry, and then times Q to the N minus X power. So what is P, what is N, what is X, what is all that stuff? What does that mean again? P, 
was the chance of, we're saying success or homes purchased, the chance of what you want to happen happening. So 60% is my P, that's the same thing as 0 0.60. My Q is gonna be one minus that, because P and Q together have to equal one. So this is the same thing as one minus P, one minus 0 0.60. All right, so that's what that is. So in part A, we're just leaving it in that format without filling in an N and an X, without filling in numbers for those. So we're saying N C X times 0.6. I can write 0 0.0 or 6 0 as 0.6, the same thing. And I can write Q as 0.4. So I have N minus X, that is staying as N minus X. And so that's what we got for part A. We're not filling in any numbers specifically for N and X until part B. So for part B now, saying what's the probability that exactly 75 of the next 100 homes purchased. So we're gonna say X now becomes 75 for this part. And, and the total number of trials, the total number of things you have to choose from is 100. So this becomes Hundred, choosing seventy-five times 0.6 to the seventy-fifth power, the x power, and 0.4 to the one hundred minus seventy-five power. Now, thank goodness for calculators or something like this. Uh, does it say that I actually need to, to figure this out? No. I'm going to see if my calculator is powerful enough. I'm looking in the back of the book right now to check my answers, and it doesn't even have that as a decimal. So I'm going to see if my calculator will do this. 100 choose 75. That's a really big number. Uh, my calculator is still thinking, yeah, that's a really, really big number. It's 2.425, etc. times 10 to the 23rd. So you're going to have to move that decimal 23 spots. Uh, there's, <laughs> suffice it to say, that's a really, really large number. And then you've got 0.6 to the 75th power, that's a really, really small number, and so is 0.4 to the 25th power. So we've got this really huge number right here multiplied to, together with a really small, really small number. Uh, do I want to find, I'm going to see if I can find something online that uh, will do this calculation for me better than my scientific calculator will. So I'm going to box this in for right now though, because that's the answer they give in the back that would give you the actual answer, but I'm going to see if I can find something that will find out what that is for me. Okay, so I've brought up this pretty sweet online program here called Wolfram Alpha. It's this extremely powerful computational engine, uh, basically like this super calculator online that you can use. A uh, hundred choose let's see, a hundred choose I think it was 75, right? Yeah, 100 to 75. That's the same thing as 100 factorial over 75 factorial times 25 factorial. So I'm going to write it like that. Times 0.6 to the 75th power, I believe, is what we said. Oops, there we go. Times 0.4 that to the 25th power. And so I think that should do it for us. Let's see what we got there. And it's working it out. And so we have this number right here. So this is what we get. So it gives me a bunch of different values. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be, oh, uh, if you wrote that as a percentage or a decimal like that, if you move that to a percent, it's less than one tenth of one percent chance of happening. So 0.06%. Not very likely that that's going to happen. Uh, so I'm not going to do the rest of that, but you can, if you really want to, you can look at that and say, oh, that's what that actually equals. That's why the book leaves it like this. You need a really powerful uh, computation calculator, etc., to do that sort of problem. Uh, I, no, I think our scientific calculator to do it. Let me check and see if my scientific calculator can handle it if I type it in all at once. And I, I doubted my calculator 
I should not have doubted it. It did it. It it did. It made it. So it, it got the same thing as this though, but cool little thing to introduce you to here. Uh, that could could be helpful on some stuff here. So it, it's about this approximately point zero 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 six two seven four six five, and that would be approximately. You move that two spots, you get the percentage. So it's still still. It's, man, that is a really, really small chance of that happening. Why is it so small? Because you're saying exactly 75, so not at least 75, but exactly 75, there's a 60% chance of that happening. That's really why it's so small. But let's move on. 68. Long stemmed roses at the Floyd's flower shop. One fifth of those ordering flowers select long stemmed roses. Find the probability that exactly three of the next five customers. Ordering flowers, select long stemmed roses. So we're still going to use this. We're still going to use this p of x and choose x, p to the x, q to the n minus x idea. So we're still going to use that here. What are those numbers though? We're saying exactly three. We can use this because each customer is independent. Each one's saying we have a one fifth chance of that happening. And so my probability of success, that's one fifth that's the same thing as 0.2 so then Q would probably be a failure not having somebody select a long stem that would be 1 minus that 4 fifths or 0.8 you could write it either way I'm going to use the decimals because it's a little easier to plug into the calculator now N we're saying and you have five total customers and from those customers you're picking three so probability of three becomes five choose three times 0.2 to the third power times 0.8 to the 5 minus 3 power. And from there, you can plug that into a calculator to see what you get. So I have 5 choose 3 times 0.2 to the third times 0.8. That would be to the second power, 5 minus 3. And that gives me this number right here. So point zero five one two. And you could write that and leave that as your answer. That's a, an acceptable answer. You could also say that's equal to move that decimal two spots. That's the same thing as five point one two percent. And so the chance of that happening about five percent, a little better than five percent. Not a very good chance of it happening, but it could happen. Sixty nine now. So taking a math course during any semester at City College 60% of the students are taking a mathematics course. Find the probability that four of the students selected at random of the four. No, not of the four. Find the probability that of four students, there we go, selected at random. None is taking a mathematics course and at least one. So this sounds like we can do this as another one of these problems because there's either success or failure. There's only two options, 60% or 40% for the remainder. So 60%. 0.60, same thing. Q, the failure, would be 1 minus that, the 0 0.40. So part A for this one, we've got none taking a mathematics course. So the probability of 0 happening, so X is going to equal 0, and N is going to equal 4 because you're picking, you've got 4 students. So none, that's why X is 0, and why N becomes 4. So you have 4. 0 times 0.6, same as 0 0.60 to the, uh, to the fourth power. I'm sorry, no it's not. To the 0 power. Because you're picking 0. So uh, that's my x value. This would be to the f times 0.4 to the n minus x. So the, to the 4 minus 0 power. In other words, to the fourth power. And let's see, plugging that into a calculator. I think it's not even really necessary. You have one way to pick zero from a group of four. Anything to the zero power is going to be one. So one times one, and then 0.4 to the fourth power. It's the same thing as four to the fourth power, but then you're going to have to move the decimal four spots over. So 256 is four to the fourth power. That means 0.4 to the fourth power is 0 0.0256. And so that. 
is your answer. You could write that as a percent if you wanted to, as 2.56%. So a small chance of that happening. Not very good. And then at least one. Again, much easier to think about saying that that's the same thing as 1 minus probability of none. And we've already figured out the probability of none. That's right there. So that's going to be plugged in right there. 1 minus 0.256. What's left over is 0.9744. That is your answer. That's the same thing as 97.44%. And then moving on to just a, a I was going to say a smattering, smattering, yes, three problems from the practice test uh, to hit a couple of other types of ideas. So even or odd. So going back to lesson 12.6 a little bit more here, these or and and problems. So number four, let's see what the, the problems say. So we're not going to do two and three, we're just going to do four and five. And exercises two through five, each of the numbers, one through nine is written on a sheet of paper, the nine sheets of paper are placed in a hat. And so we've got one through nine in the hat. If the paper is selected at random from the hat, find the probability that the number is selected. So I'll say, this is my upside down hat. We'll put them in the hat. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We don't have the digit zero, it just says one through nine. So there's nine instead of 10. If we had all 10 digits, we'd have 10 to choose from. But what is the probability the number is even or greater than four? So how many of these numbers in this hat are even or greater than four? I'll do that in red here. So we have even numbers. That's two. That's four. That's six and eight. Which ones are not also, but which ones as well? Nah, that's the same thing. Which ones are greater than four? It's four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, so, yeah, I've, my, my grammar is pretty poor right now, but how many of those are possible, or how many of those fit the criteria? Even or, it doesn't say and, but it says or greater than four. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the red ones, I've got seven that are even or greater than four. One or both of those things are true at the same time. They both don't have to be true, though. So that is 7 over 9. And that's your answer for that. What you want over the total is right there. And then for number 5, odd and greater than 4. I'll do that in green. So which one's odd and greater than 4? This one both have to be true at the same time. So which ones are odd? That's 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. But also greater than 4, that's only 5, 7, and 9. So 1 and 3 get left out because they were not also greater than 4. So with this one, you've only got 5, 7, and 9. That's 3 out of 9, which is the same thing as 1 over 3 reduced. And one more. Last one, 25. The probability that person is accepted for admission is 0.1. Find the probability that exactly 3 of the next 5 get accepted. So this is another one of those binomial probability distribution problems. Success, there's only 0.1 of that. Failure would be 1 minus that, 0.9. And so here, x, you're saying exactly 3 of 5. So x is 3, n is 5. You've got your probability of 3 is going to equal 5 choose 3 times 0.1 to the x power is 3 times 0.9 to the 5 minus 3 power. Put that into a calculator and see what you get. So I did that, put that into a calculator, and I ended up getting this. So 0 0.0081. Not a very good chance of that happening, which makes sense because there's not a very chance of getting admitted to the university in the first place. And so the chance of three of five getting selected or admitted, very, very low. And so this, move it two decimals, it's going to be less than 1%. So 0.81%, not a good chance of that happening. As needed, go back and, and uh, rewatch the ones you need to. Use that as a, a nice little tool. That's why I make these videos in the first place. So you can go back and rewind and rewatch as needed. Hopefully you found that helpful. Be ready for the test coming up very soon.